All right, traders, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Tuesday, June 18th. So one day before FOMC, we'll talk in detail about that. Uh, we had a really nice move today. I, you know, sometimes th these days happen when you're least expecting it, as I was not expecting a lot of, you know, a, a big move either way today. But um, we're now outside of the range, so really important. Uh, 2,900 is the level of support. Right, we spent we had what six days, five out of six days touching that 2900 level, so we are now outside that level. So, real, so really good. And you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow with uh, with FOMC. What I would ex expect, and a couple things to kind of trade around with tomorrow, because again, we, we don't know what Powell is going to say. A couple things that we do know is that Powell is generally the market doesn't love when he speaks. I think it's been getting a little bit better. Uh, I don't have the exact percent. Uh, if anybody has that, they could shoot that to me. But I think there is, I'm sure somebody has it, uh, of all the Fed meetings, what the average S&P uh, 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 percentage change does for that day. And I'm pretty sure there's like it's around 70 or 80 percent is a down day or, or a bad reaction after uh, he speaks. So what I would be looking for in, in the S&P, it's even like an I would take an inside day uh, for tomorrow. I would, you know, of course, love it if we if we go higher. Uh, but um, I think even if we take an inside day and hold twenty nine hundred, that would be a positive. So what are they expecting for tomorrow? They are expecting this really hasn't changed much. Uh, so, you know, the other thing that kind of got us going today was not only Super Mario Draghi um, really kind of committed to to quantitative easing uh, over in Europe. And that sends European shares higher. We could, and I'll, I can look at a couple of those charts too in Europe just to see how it looks. But just kind of really setting the tone that they are going to be con, uh, continue to be dovish. Now, is the U.S. Fed going to be that way? Uh, we don't know. And then, of course, the other thing that that sent the market flying um, and kind of kept it higher uh, was the was Trump tweeting about you know meeting up with Xi for the G20? So it looks like that's been confirmed. They had a conversation. Uh, that's good and and perhaps Perhaps some things that have been oversold, which we definitely saw today, uh, rally a bit, and you know that those were the areas that really had the momentum to them, and um, you know closed close to the highs. Although we'll we'll look at a couple names there, but yeah. So this is what uh, Fed fund futures are expecting for tomorrow. Again, this number hasn't changed. I think it went up to about 26 this morning when. Draghi was uh, concluded, and uh, so this number was up to 26, and then it fell down to 18 when uh, that meeting with Trump and Xi had, was confirmed, so it did drop a little bit, uh, and you have to ask yourself, uh, you know, and again, the decision for them to cut rates or think about cutting rates in July, uh, you know, that will come out tomorrow. Uh, are they going to need to do that if there is and again, this is we don't know anything about a trade deal, but just kind of makes you think about things if they are going to if there were to be a trade deal, would they need to cut rates? I, I would think probably not. Right. Um, you know, what's the root cause of the, the, the market being, uh, you know, some areas breaking down and, and, you know, some areas suffering with their supply chains? It's it's the tariffs and the trade rhetoric. So um, it's not the interest rates that are the cause of that. So let's just kind of dig into a couple things for the day. Um, I want to talk about option activity, but yeah, so so let's talk about bonds for a minute. And, you know, so again, this this looked great. We could look at, we could look at a few different charts, uh, index charts, and then we'll go through. Notice Q's got to the top of, sitting right at the top of value. A little bit different look than S&P. Uh, so they did that did gap up and we'll see how that works its way through with the queues. Um, keep in mind if they do make pro you know there's there's a lot of uh, things to, there's a lot of points that could you know point and counterpoint I guess for uh, if for if the trade deal happens right I mean we've certainly seen a lot of hiding places that have rallied really well Visa MasterCard. Uh, you know, things like Chipotle, things like software names, you know, all, all different areas that don't have any exposure to, 
that don't have any exposure or less exposure or less trade sensitive. So if it turn, seems to switch and the probability increases, then you're gonna, you probably will see a little bit more of what we saw today, the Chinese internet's rallying, the industrials, the metals and mining group a bit. So um, there will be rotations if that continues to pick up or if they do get some more progress done. Again, that meeting's not for another one week plus. So. Uh, that will land on not this weekend, but next weekend. So we'll see how that goes. IWM, nice to see this this move up here and um, up 1.1% and outperforming a touch today. Um, just a touch. SPY was up 1% for the day. Uh, let's go through. Oh, I do want to bring up this as well. Do I, let's see if I have this someplace. Uh, I do want to talk about the positioning. Oops, do I have this still up? see if I still have this report. Oh, I don't have it up anymore. Uh, well, I, I was going to bring up the uh, the Merrill Lynch fund, Fed fund, um, fund Manager Survey. So when I used to work at Merrill Lynch, uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, um, you know, I was a trader, but I was very close friends with some salespeople. And they would always tell me that one of the most, uh, one of the research reports that clients, hedge funds always asked for is the is the global fund manager survey uh, that came out today and that there were a lot of eyes on that because there were things like they were saying that um, that investment confidence or sediment is at the lowest it's been since the financial crisis uh, they were saying that the bonds are the our uh, treasuries are the most crowded so you know some interesting data points came out of there they also listed a couple contrarian trades but you know, really, uh, the sentiment is has has been and very low uh, has been very low, and it's pretty crazy when you when you think about that in terms of the S and P's like you know very close to making a new 52 week high, and the sentiment continues to be that low. Cash balances was the other point that have been super high. I've certainly seen that uh, analyzing the ETF fund flows. Uh, that's come off the table a little bit, I would say, in the last week or two. We have seen some some decent size inflows back into equity ETFs. But, um, you know, I know sometimes that the information that other brokers get is, is a bit lagging. But because um, I, I have seen about 14, 15 billion dollars of equity uh, inflows that'll come up. Remember, uh, who is it? Um, who's the service that puts out the fund flows on Wednesday? Uh, well, anyway, probably better. I don't say their name, but um, but they're, they're always about four or five days late in their data. And everybody looks at it and they're like, oh, wow, look at that. And not really not realizing that, because I think the last week's report that came out, you know, said that there were a lot of outflows. And I was like, well, wait a minute, your data is four days old. So anyway, when they come out this week, you're gonna see that in particular ETF saw, has seen a lot of inflows that have come back in. So anyway, I don't wanna get sidetracked with that. Uh, but that was the the fund manager survey, and I think that turned some heads a little bit uh, in regards to you know how negative things are out there and how the positioning has been. So before I go into today's performers, let me bring up TLT. You know, there's a couple trades that I are you know I'm thinking about for tomorrow. Uh, I did put on a small hedge trade for tomorrow. Um, you know, and again with any hedge trade, I think sometimes people. Uh, people confuse things a little bit. Um, my goal is not to make money when I buy SPY puts. It's just to kind of, it's an insurance policy uh, against the rest of my portfolio. So I'll have that in place just in case and it kind of gives me, you know, and again, I'm perfectly happy to lose the money on that hedge because that'll mean everything else in my portfolio is probably doing pretty well. So that's how I will be for tomorrow's uh, Fed, I've got a spy hedge, something where I'm not spending a lot of money either. Some out of the money, uh, I'll tell you what I have on. I have on the June 24, 289 puts, right? So a few dollars down and, and um, just a little bit of insurance rather than me sell positions. Uh, TLT, you can see I've got that up there. TLT might not be a bad trade also if you're looking to play puts in something. Um, that version point of control was taken out today. Um, there are there are more behind it, um, which pretty far up here. Remember the last time? I, I mean, look at how good these have been. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with this concept, it's version point of control. But look at how well um, what price has done. Now this was a little bit different here, but I, I mean, I can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is how good 
the indicator is working again I don't draw these lines manually this is all set up and and you know we've been and if you don't believe me you could look at my past tweets on TLT um, certainly here and you know, over here too. I said probably this V pocket's taken out. So now that that's taken out, you could try a reversion trade and buy, maybe buy a little bit of TLT puts. Um, I don't think that that is a bad idea. Also, you could see that there's a there's a little bit of a um, what's called as a, a negative div divergence. Um, notice we hit I guess a 52 week high. I would think it is here, and the RSI did not really confirm it. So I think an excellent trade for tomorrow. I did not put that trade on, but we'll discuss that tomorrow in the trading room. Um, that'll probably be my Fed Day trade. I also like to do something with the gold miners, but um, you know, I, I I might just turn to TLT instead. Keep in mind things that are going to be sensitive tomorrow. Don't worry, we'll go all all through this uh, in the pre market session tomorrow morning. Um, I also usually do a special session. I might do that as well uh, before the Fed uh, Fed meeting. Uh, so I'll probably do that around 12.30 or 1 o'clock tomorrow. And we'll talk about all the things that are super sensitive, like bonds, like gold, uh, currencies, right? And then, they, and then that has ripple effects, right? If bonds move a lot, banks are going to move. Uh, same thing with the dollar. If the dollar moves a lot, emerging markets are going to move things like EEM right so there's definitely ripple effects utilities are another one that will probably move pretty decently tomorrow as well so again we'll go over all that and uh, a little bit more in detail uh, in the in the trading room and, and I'll have some actionable uh, trades to to possibly put on and of course gold and gold miners if I didn't say that one already all right so that's some things uh, you know real quick today's performance uh, as I like to show this every day, I hope this is helpful um, to people to give it just a different perspective. You know, one of the reasons why I do this every day is to look at where buyers are showing up in the market. And again, not just the overnight move, right? The overnight move is here or, you know, the full move for the day is here. So semis, for, exa for example, were up 4% on the day. 3% of that move was through, um, you know, the actual trading day. Uh, the gap up was 1%. So, you know, another thing is like Facebook, for example. Look at Facebook finished actually down on the day, down 29 basis points. But from the open, uh, you know, obviously there was some profit taking after the last couple of days of run in, um, in Facebook. But what else did pretty well today? Um, just, you know, a lot of, you know, if you look at these top five things, uh, or, or top four or five different things, a lot of them just smell trade related, right? Semis up, solar names up, Chinese internet's up, steel names up. Uh, the banks were up as well. I think that had to do with the move in, in TLT a little bit coming off the highs. But, you know, there was some strength in that group today after it was weak. Yes, they were weak yesterday. Metals and mining. Real, some really interesting call activity in the XME ETF today. Um, going out to January. And I'll just give you a description of what uh, XME is if you're not familiar with it. It's the equally weighted ETF for metals and mining. So you've got a little bit It's uh, of steel names in there, gold miners, then just regular miners, uh, coal mining. You've got So you've got a lot, again, as it says, it's metals and mining. But if you think about it, uh, gold miners are going to act a lot different uh, gold miners are going to act a lot different than uh, steel names, for example, right? Two different groups. So you do have a little bit of some crosswinds within that group. But yeah, take a look at what they were doing here, some of which a lot of activity going into January. What I'm looking at is the volume here. So I don't know. I, I didn't do anything with this today because for me, as always, option activity, it's just an idea. And it's got to agree with my technicals. So XME, no doubt about it, is in a downtrend. It kind of stopped at the 50-day moving average. Um, obviously, big volume. The ETF also traded about five times its average volume today. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm a little bit concerned with that 50-day moving average. You know, maybe if it backs and fills just a little bit, I would be a buyer. I Sometimes I like to, when there's option activity on the tape, I like to try to get in at a cheaper price when the momentum is not there that day. So that day may be tomorrow. We'll see. But that was one of the um, the interesting activity for the day in, in options. Uh, what didn't perform today? Um, all of the defensives, again, which is a good sign, right? These are the ones who have been carrying the equity rally 
uh, over the last couple of weeks, or, or or at least the best performers in um, in the S and P 500, and those all took a break today. Utilities were down. Um, you know, these were all down fractionally for the day, but from the open, they sold off uh, more. Um, software. Uh, again, this group may not be, you know, it does look tired. We've been talking about that the last couple of days in the trading room. Names like Twilio are opening on the highs and then kind of bleeding the rest of the day. Um, and I've seen that not just in Twilio, but probably about five other software names. So, um, you know, that that group may ne may just need to chill out a little bit. Um, what, you know, what else has been pretty strong? Um, industrials had a big day today. Man, there's some really, there's some names that if you've stayed with it, um, honey, look at Honeywell, um, you know, up 2% in new 52 week high. I mean, that is the best in breed in the industrial space, I think anyway, uh, maybe large, you know, large cap uh, industrials. Um, OLED, this is a name that we've been talking about. Uh, I did not get into this trade. I had about a million alerts that went off in the first 10 minutes, um, one of which was OLED. I just uh, was not tracking it, but uh, this was a setup that we had in the weekend video for members and you know made a hell of a move today. If you got in it, congratulations to you, up 6.5% um, and closed pretty, pretty close to the highs of the day. Uh, there is a version point of control to aim for up here, which is 195. So mention that name. Um, that was one of my top names uh, for this weekend in the research uh, that I provided members. Um, Biotech had another good day today, which I thought we would, uh, if you watched my video yesterday, um, I mentioned I thought we would have some continuation out of this. And I also talked about that in the in the pre-market session. Um, so nice day, up one, not as big as yesterday, of course, but up 1.9%. Um, notice the version point of control up here at 92. Um, you know, also healthcare is doing, um, so it's not just that group, but look at the move in the XLV. You know, th again, this is a name that a group that's been very sideways uh, price action and been very choppy, but maybe it can get going here. Uh, I've said this a couple times and, and it's fallen apart. Um, but, you know, perhaps it can get out of this range and make 52 week highs. Um, I would watch this 93 level. But notice, uh, I like it when names are able to actually get above this virgin point of control. So I think pretty good. Um, another group, again, you know, group that just hasn't been there lately is the agriculture. I think we went over a couple of these names yesterday. Um, you know, some of these names I've just been kind of watching. And I wish I was trading all of these. Um, but Mosaic had a big day today of 3.3%. I think we talked about CF yesterday. That did take out that version point of control that I was talking about yesterday. So, uh, you know, so again, a lot of different groups participating. That, you know, I think that's the main theme of today. I mean, look at the difference between, you know, from what I've been showing every day where it's basically been the opposite. A lot more names selling off through the session. So we'll see if we get that follow through tomorrow, you know, a whole nother day tomorrow, and we'll be set up and ready to go for that. Um, Fang name is pretty interesting here. Apple did the best, you know, maybe a little bit more trade sensitive out of this group. Uh, Google did finish up 1% for the day, but uh, I guess was up about 1.1.5%. Sold off there. We talked about Facebook. Uh, Microsoft had a pretty good day today as well. Uh, one of the best performers. Uh, any other names that I want to go over for option activity? Um, just so you see a couple names, as I mentioned, uh, XME. You know, there was a little bit of a rush into China uh, internet names right when that um, headline came out about Xi and um, and Trump. And I think those are cheap ways to do it. You know, spending 34 cents, 22 cents on some options. Uh, Splunk saw some calls today. Zillow, which we've seen some call buyers in that one a couple times. And, um, and of course, some Baba calls, a little bit more Roku, and we'll, uh, we'll finish it there for the day. Guys, have a great night, everybody, and I'll see you guys bright and early in the trading room tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody.